Hello, hello, hello. Everyone can hear me, right? All right, good. Well, th first of all, thank you everyone for coming to my talk, Building Augmented Reality Applications Using AR Kit. This is going to be a very practical session. I'm going to actually show you how you can get started, and by the end of the session, you will be able to build your AR Kit enabled applications. Uh, my name is Mohammad Azam. I go with my last name. I actually don't really have a last name technically, so I just go with the order it appears. Uh, but you can call me Azam. It's pronounced like awesome, but not awesome. Let me actually also start the, uh, where's the timer? Okay, there we go. You can reach me at uh, Azam Sharp on Twitter. I work for a boot camp called Digital Crafts where I teach. Uh, with, all the job, with all the jobs that I have, this is the most rewarding because I get to change uh, other people's lives. Uh, many of you will also recognize me from some of my Unity courses. I have 19 courses, also the, with different, you can see it's very different type of courses. It's not all, all about augmented reality, but I also do have an augmented reality course and I'll distribute a discounted coupon at the end. So this is the agenda of the talk and you can see it's, it's a lot of stuff that I will cover, all right? Uh, we'll start with the shapes and the plane detection, virtual models, hit testing, collision detection, physical behaviors, and all of that stuff you're gonna see. Uh, I'm also gonna show you the image detection feature of ARK 2.0. This will be more of a demo kind of thing. All right, so I'm not gonna cover what exactly is augmented reality because at this point you will already know what exactly is augmented reality. So what exactly are scenes and nodes? That's the only concept that you have to understand in order to understand the AR kit, all right? So if I just ask you, what, what do you see over here? Like, what is this? A gas station? So that's a scene, that's it, you already know that. There you go, so that's a scene. It's a gas station scene, so that's a scene. Now all the different things that you see over here, the cars and the buildings and the trees and the grass, these are called the nodes. So when you combine all of these nodes together, it forms a scene. So this is a gas station scene, but you can think about a jungle scene with some you know, big, bigger trees and some animals, or you can see like some sort of a cave scene with some dragon and fires. So everything that you add to the scene is a node. And that's the only way you can add something to the scene and the people can then see it. And that's pretty much it. That's all the slides I have. All right. Yeah, I don't do slides. All right, so I'm gonna use, well, uh, what is this, Xcode 10, but all the things that I'm showing, you can actually do it in Xcode 9.x. So if you go to new and go to playground uh, uh, project, you'll see that there's a new template over here which says augmented reality, all right? This is going to write you the boiler level, the default code, so, so that you can get started with augmented reality. If I go on the next step, you'll see that you have three options of making an aug augmented reality app. You can choose scene kit, I don't know why it appears kind of blurry. Uh, you can use sprite kit, the second one, and the third one is metal. So Sprite Kit is a two-dimensional framework, meaning you can create games like, and I'm not a gamer, like a Mario or Pac-Man, Asteroids. Yeah, I'm also old, so I'm <laughs> referring to all the old games. Uh, uh, scene Kit, which I will be using, you can use, the, you can create 3D games like Mario Kart, and that's the only example I have. Uh, I don't know any game. Um, and the last one is a hardcore stuff, Metal. Uh, Warden actually gave a really good talk on Metal. Uh, during uh, the start of the, the start of the conference, this is like for creating like Counter Strike stuff or like really hardcore stuff. I'm gonna use Scene Kit. So I already have a project over here, and I'm just gonna run it. Now this project is a little bit modified. It's exactly the same if you select the Scene Kit and you go next, next, and that's it. The only thing that has been modified is that I've added a on the top left corner. I've added a switch control, which you'll see. So let me go ahead and run it. So this is a default project running, and this is what you're gonna see when you select the augmented reality application. My only fear is that the QuickTime doesn't blow up. All right. 
So this is the default project. I have not added any code, but I have added the code to add that switch at the top. Why? You'll see later. Don't worry about that. It's had nothing to do with uh, the AR kit that we are doing. Now I can, and I actually bought, got a long one over here, the long cable. So I can actually move around this, right? I can see what's going on behind over here and then underneath it. I can go inside. Well, not really, but you know. You get the idea, right? See how stationary it is. It's not even moving, right? It's just fixed at that particular position. All right. So let's see the code for that. This is the default code, so nothing has been changed. What we are doing is, and everyone can see at the back the, the code. All right. So we, what we are doing is we are loading a default scene, which is a ship scene, like a spaceship. The scene file is called SCN file, and this is provided by Apple. I did not create any of that. This is the scene we're loading. This scene only consists of the spaceship. If you add some monsters in there or asteroids or comets or planets, they will also appear when I run the augmented reality application. Now, I don't really care about that, so I'm gonna remove all of this. I'm gonna load a plain old scene. No, nothing has been loaded. I want to start from the beginning. I want to show you how you can add a cube, like a 3D cube, right inside your app. So I'm going to add a new function called add box. It's a little bit lower. Okay, add box, box. Okay. Now you already know that in order for anything to appear in augmented reality, I have to create a node and add that node to the scene. All right. But before I do that, I have to create what is called the geometry of what I'm about to create. A geometry is nothing more than a skeleton. So each of us, each of you also have a geometry, which is like a white skeleton underneath you, right? So that is what I need to create. So I'm just gonna call it box and SCN box. That's a geometry, that's not a node. If it's, it was a node, it would be SCN node. I can't add that to the scene. I need to provide how wide the box is and since it's a three dimensional box, so it's a, uh, width, height, and length. I'm going to say 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, corner radius, no. At that point, you might be wondering, hold on a second, Azam, it's 0 0.3, I won't be able to see it, it's so small, right? Well, it's 0 0.3 meters. Everything in AR kit is in meters. So 0 0.3 meters is pretty decent size. All right, oops, it's kind of hard to type over here. Here we go. Now I will create a box node which is SCN node. And look at that, one of the initializer or constructor is geometry. I'm gonna pass in the geometry. And then finally, I need to add that to the scene. So scene root node dot add child node and add the box node. The scene view is something that is already on the interface. If you go and see the storyboard, Scene view is kind of like controlling what is getting displayed on the screen. This is a scene view. But I'm adding it to the scene. There's already a root node, so that's by default, and you just attach stuff to the root node. So what happens if I run this application right now? Hopefully the quick time won't crash, but let's see. All right, so spaceship is gone now. There's no spaceship anymore, but Where's the box? Here it is, right? I didn't specify the position of the box, so by default the position is zero, 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 which is where I'm standing, and that's why I won't be able to see it. But now I can, and I can walk around the box, and I can look underneath the box and all that stuff. Great. Currently the box doesn't really have any character, it's just a plain box. So how about we add some color to it and also a little bit of a light to it. So in order to add a color, you need to create something called a material. What is material? Well, this is kind of like my material. If I wear the shirt, this is my materials covering, you know, my body and this is how I, it's uh, basically represented, right? If you look at this floor, maybe underneath the floor there's concrete, hopefully not like wooden floor, right? 
So, and then this is, the carpet is a material. So material is something you decorate. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a material. Material.diffuse.contents. This means that this is the color I want to appear. This is how the light will reflect off the material. I'm gonna just color the material purple. How many sides does the box have? Well, whatever size it has, like six, all of it to supply the same exact material, so purple. If you do want like red, green, blue, purple, yellow, pink, then you can pass in different parameters into the, uh, into the array. I think that's pretty much it. The only thing I need to do is to, I need to enable the light. So scene view dot light, and this is default lighting, enable is true. Let's go ahead and also set up the position because I don't want to move again and again. So this is box node dot position. And this is again the three dimensional position X, Y, and Z. X, Y up, and Z away or on that direction. I want the box to appear a little bit away from me. So I don't really care about the X and Y. I do care about the Z. And away from me means a little bit on the negative side. Once again, it's meters, all right? Let's go ahead and first build this. And let's run it. And hopefully I don't have to move anymore because I'm placing the box away, 0.8 meters away from me. So here's the box. And I don't know if you can notice, but there's a little bit of a light going on over here. You see that? Of a shading, I can't really see a little bit, but you can see a little bit of shading effect going on right now. It's not a perfect lighting, but with one line of code, I think it's good enough, right? It's more of a targeted lighting, like if I'm uh, uh, holding a flashlight and I'm just showing it off on the cube. All right, that's great. So if we can make a cube, how about we can make a spear? So I'm going to go ahead and say add spear, and you'll see the code is pretty much the, exactly the same but spear doesn't really have any sides, so we have just the radius of the spear. I'm also placing the spear at minus 0 0.5. The spear is not using any color, but it's using the image of the earth, which is right here. So it's basically, you have a tennis ball and you wrap it up in a piece of paper or something. So let's go ahead and see what it looks like. Who's running? All right. So instead of a cube, we are now using a spear. Move a little bit over here. That's Canada right there, right? No? All right. No? Just checking, just checking. Here we go. I think this is going to change the education system as we move along into two to five years, and students and kids will be able to see the earth or in different things in different perspectives. All right, so this is great, but hold on, we're using scene kit. So we have all the power of scene kit. So we have animation, we have particle effects, we have rotation, we have everything we can do with scene kit. Scene kit is a gaming framework. So let's go ahead and rotate the earth. So I'm gonna create a rotate action and rotate by, I don't know if I have to rotate over here, but I'll say 0. Point, well, not 0. 0.25, well, 0. Yeah, I think it should be okay. Let's see. And duration, let's say one. I want to rotate Earth continuously because that is how Earth is rotating, right? Repeat action. And this is all scene kit, nothing to do with AR kit, all right? And repeat the action, which is in this case, rotate action. Oops, not repeat action, repeat forever action. Let's see an action dot repeat forever, this one and repeat forever, rotate action, and then finally you can say spear node dot, uh, spear node dot run action, and repeat action, I guess. So we have used the power of scene kit to apply some animations to our nodes, and those nodes can now be animated. Move a little bit back. Right. And obviously you can move it in any direction you want, I'm just I think I'm doing it in y-axis or something. And also you can rotate it in any speed that you want. I think it's like rotation like one second or something. Mm -hmm. 
All right, so this is all good, but I won't be using cubes and spears. I mean, I have some graphic designer and 3D artists, and they will create really nice virtual models for me. I don't have any idea how to create those, but they will. Now, you can get your virtual, I don't know why to open it over here, but you can get your virtual model from anywhere. This is poly.google.com. You can download virtual models from over here for free, and you can use it. Uh, most of them are cartoonish style, but if you're looking for like realistic, you have to go to uh, TurboSquid or Sketchfab, and if you're looking for a really good model, you have to actually pay a lot of money for that. I already have downloaded a model, really vicious uh, zombie model, uh, a bear. So we are going to see that if we can display this bear into our world. So how do we do that? So if I go over here, comment this out, I'm going to say add virtual model. And let's go ahead and create this. Add virtual model. Okay, so the virtual model is actually already inside a scene file. This is not a SCN file, this is a DAE file, which is a Kulada file, which is a different format, but you can still load stuff from here. So I can import stuff from this scene and attach it, attach it to my scene, all right? So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna call this bear scene equals to SCN bear, oh, not SCN bear, SCN scene and passing in the name. So what's the name of that file? bear.dae. I'm gonna unwrap it because I'm cool over here. You should unwrap like a, like a safe unwrapping. And then I'm gonna get that particular item, root node.child node with name. So what is the name that we gave to our node? These are all the nodes. I don't know if you can see, it's like right over here, you can see and the name of the node is also the name of the scene, which is bear. But you can type in any name you want for anything. So I'm going to say, go ahead and load bear, which is a node. And yes, find in all the, you know, all the different, all the different hierarchy. Bear node. Now this bear is actually very, very big. So I need to place it a little bit away. All right. So let's go ahead and do that. Zero, zero and minus zero point eight. I can change the size of the bear, but let's just keep it big. And then finally, once a node, once we have the node, we can simply say scene view dot scene dot scene dot root node dot add child node, just like we added the uh, the cube and the sphere. It's the same exact thing, but this time we're adding a bear node or a bear in the other words. Now this is a big bear, so let's see. Oops, there we go. Let's actually minimize this. Yeah, I told you it's pretty big. I can't even move past. All right, here we go. It's a pretty big bear. All right, let's see. There we go. So here it is. So we can definitely load the virtual model, but immediately I noticed a problem. Bear is for some reason looking down. I don't know, maybe he's drunk or something. Something happened to him. I don't want the bear to be like this. I want the bear to be like, you know, sitting. Now I can play around with something called Euler angles, but I want to do it in my scene file. So if I go to my bear scene and select the bear, I don't know if you can see it on the back over here. Currently the camera is set to perspective, right? Now this is what I learned like the hard way is that if you want something in the scene file to appear as you will run on your iPhone and looking through the iPhone, you have to set this camera to front. And this is what we saw when we actually ran the application. Now this is most probably not what you want the bear to be doing. You want the bear to be basically setting up or sitting up. So over here is, you know, angles, you can see the X is 90 degrees. I'm just gonna make it zero and play around with it so that the bear can, well, sit. And with that change, if I run it again, you will see that now bear wouldn't be facing downwards. It will be just sitting. And that's what I actually wanted to do. All right, now this is a pretty big bear actually, All right? Okay, so that's all good. But I don't want the bear to be hanging around on mid space. I want to put it on a floor. 
right? And that is called the plane detection. Plane detection basically means that the AR kit will be able to detect where the plane is, meaning a flat surface or a uh, the vertical surface. Now there are some criteria for plane detection. The lighting has to be good, which is okay over here, and the floor has to be textured, which might not be okay over here. But this is very well textured floor. All right, so there are some things that you have to uh, keep in mind when you're doing plane detection. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to enable some debugging stuff, which has nothing to do with you uh, putting the app in the production, but you will see that how it actually detects the plane. So let me actually do that. So this is SCN debug option. So I'm going to say SCN, SCN debug option dot raw feature points or something, show feature points. This is just for debugging so that you can see that how ARKit is trying to find out the plane. All right. In order to enable the plane, I will just have to set one small flag in the configuration. This is the AR world tracking configuration. And I just have to simply say that, yes, I am interested in plane detection and I'm only interested in horizontal plane. You can detect vertical plane and horizontal. Vertical might also actually work. This is nicely textured. The lighting might be a little bit of an issue, but I'm just going to detect the horizontal plane. All right. Now, when the plane is actually detected, what actually happens? Let me actually go over here. This function, which is called the render function and did add, is actually getting fired. What it does is that whenever it detects a plane, let's say not over here, but most probably in the carpet, it's going to put something called an anchor. An anchor, you can think of it like a hook that's going to place over there and it's going to ask you, hey, you want to put something on the anchor? Like you're going to put a car over here or a spaceship over here and you can do that. All right. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to say if anchor is AR plane anchor, then I will do something over here. Let's first go ahead and simply print out plane detected. All right. I have to come back and show you that it actually prints out something or not. But you should be able to see those uh, yellow spots for debugging. And I think I should have. So you see that yellow uh, spots? If there are a lot of yellow spots, that means that it is able to find a plane. And you can see if ah, it's too big, uh, the uh, bear is coming in the way. So, but you can see that not really many spots are coming. And let's see if it actually detected a plane or not. It is. It has detected plane, even with, it has actually detected three planes, right? So it might be a little bit over here, it might be on, on that, on the floor, all right? So it is definitely detecting these planes. It is saying that, yes, I found something flat, okay, the lighting is good, and it looks like the texture is also good, so you can put something over here, all right? So what do we put over here? Well, I can put anything I want on the plane. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a plane, which is SCN plane. Now this plane has nothing to do with actual plane detection. This is a geometry that we are creating. What this plane is like a piece of paper. It has only width and height. And this is like putting a piece of paper, like whenever I detect a plane, just put that piece of paper over there. All right. So this is more of a geometry that we are putting it. Uh, let's go ahead and create some material. SCN material. And then material.diffuse.contents. We can set some sort of an image. Now I'm going to put a red carpet over here because I always wanted to walk on a red carpet. And John didn't provide that. So I'm going to just create my own red carpet. All right. I'm also going to say that this material is double-sided, meaning you can look at it from, from this side and you can look at it from this side. I think most of you have double-sided things anyways, right? All right, great. So now I can create something called a plain node, an SCN node, and I can simply pass in that particular geometry. All right. So now the question is, where should I display this particular plane? Well, the great thing about this is that when ARKit finds a plane, it 
provides you the anchor, which is a hook that you can put it over there, but it also is kind enough to provide you a node that I'm also placing a node over there. You can just add it to that node and you'll be good to go. So I can simply add this node.add subchild plain node. All right. Now it's hard to detect plane over here, so that's why I have like something called over here, like a textured stuff. Uh, so I'm going to just put it right over there. And let's see if it's able to detect that plane. And when it does detect that plane, it's going to create a red carpet for us. Or well, for me actually. So let's see. Okay. So definitely the color is not going through. Maybe I missed something, but that's fine. But another problem I see is it's kind of like, looks like vertical, right? I mean, the carpet has to be like this, not like standing up. And we have another issue with the material and that's my fault because I never actually said plain node dot first material, no, not material, plain dot first material, let's see. Plain, just like the material we set in the cube, I can set the material for the particular plane. There we go. But we also saw a problem with it was appearing vertically and I can't really walk on a carpet that's vertical. So I need to move this. So Euler angles dot X. So I'm gonna just rotate it a little bit on basically pi divided by 45 degrees, right? Pi is actually one degree, so 90 degrees. All right. So now let's go ahead and run this. And this is well textured, so it should be able to detect the plane with no issues. Come on, come on, come on. Sometimes it takes a little bit of time. I'm not sure what's going on. Here we go. And I can walk on the red carpet. Well, I think you can see. It's, it's a little small walk, but definitely luxurious. Right? <laughs> but, uh, you know, better than nothing. So you can see that I can add a red carpet, all right? All right, so that's good, but I'm gonna just change this to some other image, which is overlay underscore grid dot, well, I don't need it, which is simply this. It's nothing, I mean, you can use any image you want, all right? Okay, so we got something on the plane I can put some stuff on it. I can put some furniture on that. I can put some other stuff on it. I want to put my bear on the plane that I just detected. All right, so whenever I touch or I tap, I want to add the bear to that particular position and not in the middle of the air, all right? So the first thing I need is something called a tap gesture recognizer. So I created that. Let's go ahead and also register this. There's nothing special going on, just a tap gesture. In the tap gesture, I'm going to find out which view has been tapped. So scene view equals to recognizer dot view as ARSCN view. Now I need to find out which location has been tapped. And this is a two dimension location of your iPhone that has nothing to do with the location of the plane scene view. All right. So this is a two dimension location, the X and Y where I touched on my phone. So now I need to perform a hit test, meaning a ray of light is going to go from there and it's going to try to hit it on the plane. If it intersects with the plane, yes, I have touched the plane. If it does not, it's not going to touch the plane. I'm going to do a little bit of a shortcut over here. Hit test result equals to uh, scene view dot hit test. The point we're going to pass in the touch and what type of detection that you're looking for. I'm just going to say estimated plane, meaning the plane that you just found with the plane detection option. All right. Now I can go ahead and create, where's my, yeah, this one. I can get the same code for the virtual object, which is that's a bear. So this is good, this is good, this is not good because now we need to put the teddy bear where I, where, where the plane is, where I actually clicked or touched. All right. So you can do that with hit test result dot world transform dot columns dot three dot x and y and z. Because in the end, all of this is just a matrix multiplication where the last column is the 
position column that you need. All right. So let's go ahead and run this. Hopefully we'll have time to show everything, but let's see. All right. All right, so the first thing first, it's gonna detect the plane. It's gonna add red carpet, or in this case, it's just the overlay grid. I'm gonna to touch this particular overlay grid, and here's our teddy bear right on the plane, just sitting there, right? Now the plane is detected throughout, so I should be able to just add teddy bear anywhere I want, right? It's not only on that particular spot. So now I have two teddy bears. Great. So one of the things that teddy bear is missing, or our virtual object is missing is effects of the gravity, right? It doesn't do anything, it just sits there. There are no gravitational forces on uh, the, the bear. So let's go ahead and add uh, some sort of a physics to our bear. So here's our bear node. I'm gonna say bear node, actually let me see if I added that. Okay, so bear node dot physics body. So now you're defining a physics body for your bear. The type of the body can be static, meaning it doesn't move, and it can be dynamic, and there's another, I can't spell that, kinematic or something, which means the body can actually move. It doesn't do anything with the collision. It can like move and affect other bodies. I'm gonna do dynamic. And the shape, I'm gonna just pass in nil. So when I'm passing nil, I'm just saying that Scene kit, go ahead and find the shape. I don't have time to create the shape for the bear. Just go ahead and find the best shape for my, for my bear. I also need to do something called a category bit mask. A category bit mask is simply saying that when you add a body to the physical world, it should have a category bit mask so that it can interact with other bodies. Now, I already have created this enum, which is nothing more than three different values with three different numbers. Category bit mass is different for each of these things. What is going on? All right. Okay, so now we have added physics to our bear. So let's see what happens if we try to add the bear to, to the plane. Try to put it on the plane so that the bear can sit on the plane. All right, so first of all, I'm gonna detect the plane. Here we go. And it actually falls down, right? Bye-bye. <laughs> right. So what's going on is that even though bear is taking part in the physical world, the plane that we put, uh, the platform that we had put on the floor doesn't really take part in that particular uh, physical you know, body. So your first clue would be that, hey, this is where I'm creating that geometry for the plane. I can do the same exact thing. So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy these two things. I'm gonna replace that. And this is a plane, this is a plane node. So I'm gonna just replace this plane node with this and put it to static. And I don't know what I called it, I think plane. Let's go ahead and build that. So we have added physics body to our plane node also. That's the plane that we are adding, like a small platform on which the teddy bear is resting, all right? Now, if I run this, it's not gonna work. It's gonna be the same exact thing. Trust me, all right? I'm not gonna run it, but it's gonna be the same exact thing. We're kind of like running out of time. Now, the reason is that in order for your plane and objects to take part in collisions and anything physical related, they have to be added to the scene view node and not the ARSCN session node that we are doing over here. Remember, we are not really adding this to the scene view. All right, so let's go ahead and forget about that. And let's go ahead and try to see if we can add the plane node to the scene view. So first of all, I'm also going to change the position because now we don't have a position. The position was provided to you by the node and we are not even using the node. SCN vector, Z, uh, the XYZ. Well, XYZ is, I believe, pass in anchor dot transform dot, the same thing, columns dot three dot X, Y and Z. The third column of the matrix contains the position and Z. And finally, go ahead and add it to the scene view dot scene dot root node dot add. Same exact thing. 
and plane node. So now we are adding to the scene view, so it should obey the laws of gravity now because it's also, we have also given up, uh, we're also saying that the plane that we are putting on the, the platform that we are putting is a static, it can be moved, and well, it has a different body type, not a body type, category bit mask. So these two bodies can now collide with each other. All right, oh, I thought this, all right. All right, so let's see now. Here we go, and oh, steady, here we go. So now we can actually put that particular uh, teddy bear on the plane, all right? Now, if I try to push this teddy bear, it is going to fall. There's a very small platform, and this teddy bear is pretty big, right? So let's go ahead and do that. So remember that UI switch that I added? The only purpose of that UI switch is that I can switch between shooting at the bear, which is what I'm gonna do, or placing a bear, all right? So let's go ahead and do that. If self dot if shooting not enabled, then go ahead and add the bear, which we were doing anyways. Else, well, you know, uh, what's the function name I actually forgot? Shoot the bear. Don't worry about the stuff going on to shoot the bear. I'll show you maybe later, but let's see now. So if I toggle that uh, switch to on, I have the uh, capability of shooting at the bear. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. So let's enable it and see if I can actually even shoot. I mean, so I'm gonna enable that, but look out. So I can shoot these cubes. Obviously you can shoot anything you want, and let's shoot these cubes. All right, let's disable that, because now I need to detect a plane, and I need to put, oh, all right, let's go back and try to shoot this bear. Now, although this bear looks big uh, and kind of scary, <laughs> it's not. I mean, the, there's no mass to the bear. I mean, it's like kind of like empty, hollow inside. I mean, we didn't provide it a mass. So let's enable shooting now. I'm going to shoot like over here so you can see the bullets are. And I can actually shoot with my eyes closed if you want. I mean, I <laughs> but, oh, this is the first time I actually didn't fall. Hmm. There we go. <laughs> oh. <laughs> right. Let's see if you can actually All right. Cool. So we have covered a lot of things. You, you started with the geometry of cubes and sphere, adding virtual objects, collision detection. This is more than enough for you to get started creating your applications. Uh, I'm going to show, so I have seven minutes. Here's my book. I'm going to show some other stuff. So let me actually pull this out. So this is a feature of ARKit 2.0 I'm showing you. And this feature allows you to do image detection as well as tracking, all right? So let me first show you what I'm looking at with my camera, camera app. My oh boy, all right. Obviously an Android phone, I mean, we are at the Android conference, right? So this is the Android phone. I'm looking at the camera. This is not the app running. All right? And this is my iPad. I can, I mean, this is, here we go. So what happens if I run an app for image detection and look at the phone, the picture of the phone, the Android phone, with this particular... All right? I think this will be the future of advertising. You go into a mall, just like I think, I don't know if you've seen the movie uh, Ready Player One, where he goes shopping for his uh, suit, right? Once he, once he gets on, and I can actually move. Obviously, if I go over here, and it has to be, like the image has to be, like nicely positioned. So image tracking is pretty, pretty decent, actually, pretty good. You can also think about all the movie posters that are some outside the movie theater or somewhere. Oops. So you will be able to see at the theater, I mean at the, look at the movie poster and you will be able to see the trailer of the movie. All right. How about TVs? I think TVs are also going to be extinct uh, at, at the point of extinction. extinction. Um, why use a TV? 
but you can actually create your own TV, which is not bound to the size of your room. Oops, there we go. A little bit drifting. Right? You can watch a movie or whatever you want to do. All right, uh, other examples, I can actually show you this one, the map kit. I think when, when you're creating a city or when you're architect, architecturing a city, we always use like a two-dimensional maps, right? So I think in the future, what it will be, it will be more of a three-dimensional map. Let's see if it actually even works. It might take a while. I don't know if I'm actually connected to the internet or not, but it doesn't look like it's doing anything actually at this point. All right, that's okay. Uh, and the final example I have is the portal. Now that's a very hard to do example. I mean, it's very easy to create, but to present you is very hard because I'm tied up over here. So let's see if I can actually close this and I got four minutes, so I should be able to hopefully show you something. It's hard to show because I need a big, uh, much, I don't know what, what that is. Uh, I need a much bigger space to, my book please show up. Usually it doesn't work. It doesn't look like it, it likes it. Okay, let's see, two, zero, four, seven. Come on, come on. Okay, let's see if the portal does work. Uh, all right, put this problem with portal is that it can appear anywhere. <laughs> That's like a real one. Okay, so I don't think I have to be plugged anymore. Yeah, it's too slow. This internet is way too slow for this. All right, so let me actually then, yeah, it actually even crashed. <laughs> So let's do the portal again. Where's the wire? We got three minutes, so it should be okay. Now portals are not really hard to create, it's just very time consuming to create. With all the shapes that you have learned, like the plane and the cube, you can create these portals. And I think in the future, you will have these portals. You can just walk into a portal and experience a completely different thing. So here's a portal. I don't even know where the portal is actually going to appear. So the problem is that now I'm inside this portal, and I don't know the way out. <laughs> uh, it's actually over here. But I don't have enough space to go out. So that's the main problem with the portal. So even though I'm standing, well, you can see right at the corner, I can't really walk out of the portal. It's, it's actually, this is how my room actually looks like in your world. <laughs> you see there's a bed, and I can walk into, I mean I can walk out of, and you can see, I can see the real world, but if I rotate, I can see completely made up virtual world, which I cannot get out. Right? Yeah, that's the furthest I can actually go in the portal. Now there is persistence, you can persist your information also, you can do it using Firebase with Google, you can do it with uh, Apple, so you can persist, I can add a furniture over here, and I can just kill the app, go home, come back, the furniture will be here, the virtual furniture, you can all, you can do those things, you can share experiences also. All right, so this is a coupon code. You can take a picture. This is a coupon code link for my course if you want it. This is like a 13-hour course, but I would say, I mean, at least do like four sections. If you can do like four or five sections from the, from the start, you will have a much better idea of uh, augmented reality because everything is based on those uh, initial sections of the page, I mean, of the course. All right? Uh, my contact is, I can be found on Adam Sharp on Twitter, AdamSharp at gmail.com. And we are pretty much done on time. Thank you so much, everyone, for coming. I really, I really enjoyed it.